My name is Professor Simon Blackmore. Uh, I am Head of Engineering at Harper Adams University in England. The area that we're interested in is uh, what we call robotic agriculture. And this is where we've got the ability these days to be able to use the new technologies to be able to automate uh, subsystems and systems within the agricultural sector right the way through to the, to the point where we can now run machines by themselves to be able to do useful tasks for us. So this is an extension of precision agriculture and we're interested in really what technology push will enable. So we're using uh, instruments and sensing systems from the conference here today to be able to explore not only how the machines can do the work by themselves, but also how we can measure um, the complex nature of the growing environment. So we're interested in the soil, the water, the growing plants, the pests and diseases, and all the new types of sensing systems are giving us a, an insight into um, what these problems are, and specifically if we can do it, to then measure the extent of these problems. Uh, the particular area that I'm interested in is the machines themselves. So we're developing a whole range of uh, smart machines now that potentially might be able to replace the tractor and the combine harvester. And we're coming up with systems that will allow us to um, be able to replace uh, herbicides. Many different uh, countries um, are using different sorts of herbicide to kill weeds. One particular project I'm developing is called laser weeding. So instead of using chemical, and uh, we then have got all the issues of herbicide resistance and uh, the problems of residues uh, both in the groundwater and on the foodstuffs, we can bypass that completely in terms of uh, killing the weeds from using physical methods. So my preferred method at the moment is to use uh, uh, machine vision to recognize up to 26 different species of weeds, be able to um, see the or uh, measure the uh, leaf area of the, uh, of the weed, the position and the biomass, and then uh, being able to do one of two things. One is to be able to put uh, chemical only onto the leaf of the weed, which then can possibly save up to 99.99% of the chemical. And the other thing then is to be able to recognize the growing point of the weed, or what we then call the meristem. And if we heat up the meristem with a laser up to 95 degrees C, we can then send that plant into dormancy or to kill it. And so we now have the ability to be able to uh, protect our crops without using herbicides at all. So at the moment, we use a lot of energy in agriculture and we plough the whole field and we spray the chemical over the whole field, but very small amounts of it ever go onto target or is actually used to solve the problem we really, need, really have got. But the concept of intelligently targeted inputs is to use these types of sensors that we're seeing here today to be able then to understand in more detail and be able then just to pinpoint the correct dosage, the exact right amount of energy being put in exactly the right place to be able then to minimize that amount of energy. But by putting it on target, there is no waste. It is then less cost to the farmer. It's good for environment, it's good for economics, and it's good for the consumer. So if you want to then consider this from a, a worldwide perspective, um, we've got many new mouths to feed, the population is growing, we've got a limited area for land, and so therefore what I'm trying to do is what we call uh, sustainable intensification. So by um, making the crop production system significantly more efficient, we can then get the same foodstuffs or increase the food with significantly less uh, energy and less inputs. It's any of the uh, non-contact solid state sensors that are of particular interest to us because um, if they're small enough we can put them onto a UAV 
and if they need more power or they're too big, we can put them onto a, a, a ground vehicle, ground robot, to then go to the plot trials and take all the measurements that we're interested in. So um, anything really to do with uh, lasers, anything to do with uh, um, spectral responses, the, these are the hot topics. This is what everybody's talking about now. When I first started this, discussing this work, uh, 10, 15 years ago, uh, the farmers laughed. Uh, this guy's crazy. He's so far out there coming up with the whole concept of, of robots and small machines. But farmers don't laugh these days. Farmers ask acute questions. How are you going to deal with this? Uh, what technique are you going to do to solve that problem? And uh, when we then can see that we've got the uh, economic uh, drivers uh, that are always um, applied to farmers um, and increasing uh, environmental laws, then effectively we've got to come up with a new, much more flexible uh, crop production system. So we can't farm the way that our grandfathers farmed. We can't farm, in, can't farm by averages anymore. We have to take into account the weather. We have to take into account crop prices. We have to take into account new legislation. So the farmers don't have the tools to be able to react quickly. Mainstream manufacturing has moved away from one type of production line into flexible manufacturing. Farmers now need to move across into the whole concept of flexible manufacturing. But to allow them to do this, we then have to give them the tools that allow that type of flexibility. And that's what we can see that we can do with the concepts of robotic agriculture.